ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به جل ولا نكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه ادى الامانه وبلغ الرساله ونصح الامه وكشف الله به الغم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى كل من اهتدى بسنته الى يوم الدين والعاقبه للمتقين اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين امين امين ثم امين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد my mother is preparing dinner for us tonight if you take this simple utterance and break it down one will see just how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has truly blessed every single word that we have said and connected it to a reality in the unseen that is bathed in the blessing and mercy and the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he transacts with his creation. Imam al-Razi says as he is expositing the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in those verses He says that every single word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals has 10 spiritual stations. And every spiritual station has 10 vistas from which we witness reality. He says for every single word those stations are the following. And I won't give all 10 but he says for every single word there is the right of ash-shukru alayha there is the right of gratitude for that word was sabru alayha and there is the right of patience in implementing that word war rida biha and there is the right of contentment with that word as being received and so on and so forth and these are the the maqamat of yaqeen these are the spiritual stations of certainty which will render the faith of the believer perfect for every single word and so as we speak and as we articulate as we rationalize al insanu haywanun nathir the human being is the rational animal and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us bayan allamahu al bayan he taught us how to articulate when we break down exactly what we are saying word by word we can see if we pause and we if we take our time we can see just how benevolent our benefactor is just how beneficent the compassionate lord is with us and in this, in this simple utterance this simple articulation my mother is preparing dinner for us tonight let us take a step back and think about what the word my means my mother for in my there is the recognition of a gift and not an entitlement for none of us are entitled to our mothers many people come into those this world and their mothers die in childbirth but the fact that i can say my mother means that there is a gift that was given to me and she belongs to me now and not to anyone else there is the right of this relationship that she now is ascribed to me and is that not a gift beyond words is that not a gift for which i must be grateful that i can even say my and then mother the word mother this person that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in our lives and whether they are still alive or they have passed on our connection to them has never is never severed 
this woman who, if you look back at the past 20 years of her life, just 20 years of her life, and count the number of meals that she has prepared for you, they, they number in the tens of thousands. Tens of thousands of meals that she has prepared thanklessly for her family. The word mother, my mother, this, this woman who has spent countless days and nights grieving over our well-being when we fall sick, stressing over our futures as we meet or fall short of her expectations and how she raised us, this blessed woman in our lives, at whose feet heaven lies, my mother, is, is. How many wish that they could even say that word, is? That is the word that is uttered by a privileged class of people who are, who are alive on the earth today. For everyone before us can no longer say this word is with any meaning. Because we are in the moment alive. And is is a privilege for those who exist, to be able to say it with the confidence that the next moment will come, but that next moment we may not come. So the fact that we can even say is deserves our gratitude for that next breath and that next moment that hosts our lives, preparing. Look at how much time she spends cutting the, the, the vegetables, slicing up the meat, preparing the rice, adding the right spices, making it all smell nice. That's all, that all goes there into preparation, let alone the time that it took for her to actually find the, the food in the grocery store or at the farmer's market or wherever she... She got that food. That all is there in the preparation. And then the, 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 the entire process, the entire process for getting the food from the seedling to your, to your supper plate, the industry that supports that, all of that is contained in that word preparing. Dinner you have another meal. You have another meal where what majority of the denizens of this earth cannot say that they can expect dinner tonight. But these are meals that are guaranteed to us living here in the West. They're guaranteed without us having to work so hard from the surplus that we suffer in this country. Dinner, another meal. Allah SWT says that on that day you will be asked about the blessings. Four, just in case you missed the sentence, my mother is preparing dinner for us tonight. Four, in that word, there is intentionality. In that word, there is the love that is in the mother's heart that is moving her limbs and that is keeping her on her feet as she is preparing this meal while she is reciting salawat on the Prophet wasallam to bless it. And why? For. For Allah and His Messenger. For the well-being of her family for the health of her children, for her ability to answer on the Day of Judgment, did you dispense of your responsibility? All of this is moving her heart in the kitchen as she prepares that meal. And for whom? For us. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered other people around you, your siblings, your father, your uncles and aunts, your 
grandchildren, your neighbors, your friends who are invited as guests, for all of us. And do we not have a reason to celebrate us? You alone do we worship and you alone do we beseech for assistance. Us. She's doing so for us. All of the people to whom you are connected in that family and in the extended family and among your neighbors and friends. Those people to whom we are connected. And she is preparing that meal for us tonight. Tonight, in tonight, there is hope for the future. There is hope for the moments that will come. There, will, there is hope for another chance for tomorrow. There is hope that you will actually reach tonight. And in that hope, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is owed gratitude. There is not a single word that we utter except that it is connected to a blessing. Not a single word that we utter except that it is connected to a blessing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُهُ And if you were to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to accomplish them. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّا for the mankind is ever oppressive and ever ungrateful. And he says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And if you were to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you would never be able to enumerate them. Indeed, Allah is forgiving, compassionate. Both verses, one in Surah An-Nahl and one in Surah Ibrahim, begin in the same way. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا And if you were to enumerate the blessings of Allah, you would not be able to encompass them. But one of them ends with a social commentary on the human condition, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُّمٌ كَفَارٌ Mankind is ever oppressive and ungrateful. And in that verse, the ta' of ni'ma is a ta' marbuta. I'm sorry, it's a ta' mabsuta. Ta' mabsuta means the full ta'. You get a full ta' in that word ni'ma. Wa in ta'udu ni'mata Allahi la A full ta' you get in that. A full ta'. And that full ta' gives the sense of plurality. It gives a sense of abundance. It almost leans into a jam'a mu'annat salim which is a sound feminine plural. It leans toward that, even though the broken plural of ni'ma is ni'am. But it leans toward that, that if you take all the blessings of Allah, the abundant blessings of Allah, and try to count them, you would not be able to do so, for mankind is ever oppressive and ungrateful. But the ni'ma of the other verse, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and compassionate. That ta is written as a ta marbuta. Well, from your perspective, like this. A ta marbuta. And the ta marbuta is for singularity. It is not for plurality. There is no plural that has a ta marbuta. Which means that if you were to account, if you were to enumerate the blessings of your Lord, you wouldn't be able to do so and Allah is ever forgiving and merciful, right? In that He will take all of those blessings that He has given you, and He will treat them all as though they were just one blessing for which we must be grateful. And that is symbolized there in the Ta' Marbuta. But then we don't even have to go through the orthography of how this word is written. And that's all tawqifi from the Prophet ﷺ. We just look at the word ni'ma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if you were to count the ni'ma of Allah, you wouldn't be able to encompass it. What does the word ni'ma mean? It means blessing. It does not mean blessings. And if you were to account, if you were to enumerate the blessings of Allah, that's not what the verse, say, the verse says. It says, if you were to enumerate the blessing of Allah, 
you wouldn't be able to encompass it. The single blessing. Every single blessing. Just one blessing. Take one blessing and try to enumerate it. Well, very easy. It's one. You just gave me the answer in the question. You take one blessing. Take one blessing. Eyesight. And now try to enumerate that. How many blessings is eyesight? That I'm able to see depth. I'm able to perceive color, shades, tone. I'm able to, on a moment's notice, from my peripheral vision, what I'm not even looking at, I'm able to notice that things are coming my way as I drive on the streets. That if there's specks of dust that I can't even see, that my eye will pick up on it and, and I'll blink so that none of that gets into my eye. al aynu alayha haris, the Arabs say. That there is, a, there is a guard over the eye. There is a guardian for the eye. The fact that I see everything upside down in my, in my mind. I actually see things that upside, everything is upside down. And through some, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just through some process flips it instantly just to show that he can. <laughs> just to show that he can. Like, like what was the wisdom behind that? Like why, why that? Okay, so I'm able to see everything. It's a miracle beyond miracles. So why can't I see it right side up? The way that I see you. You're not, you're not sitting upside down. Why do I see you upside down? And then the brain has to flip it instantly as I see it. Just because he can. Subhan al-Khaliq. <laughs> Subhan al-Khaliq. Subhan Allah. Ahsan al-Khaliqin. So you try to enumerate that. You try to enumerate that. The color of the eye. The iris, the, the, the composure, the, the fact that the eye can, can yeah, I mean, what? The point is me. If you were to count the blessing of Allah, you wouldn't be able to enumerate it. But the blessings are intended. And although they are intended, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them with the singular because he would treat us through his compassion as though they were all one blessing if we just have shukr. If we just have shukr. And that is the topic of today's khutbah is shukr. This beautiful word shukr. That in the language they would call, they would call a dabba shakur. They would call this beast, right? If you have a, a cow or a bull or something, they call, they call it uh, shakur. The reason they would call it shakur is that even though its, um, its food is so scarce, its meat is so plenty. When it eats little herbage, right? The, the herbage is very, very scarce, especially in the desert, right? The herbage is very scarce, but the meat is so abundant and it's so heavy with meat and it gives and it gives and it gives of its milk. That is called the Dabba Shakur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Shakur because even though our deeds are so scarce and so deficient, and they fall short so much. Allah gives and he gives and he gives and he gives. And he is a shakur. This word shakara. If you look at. If you take Ibn Jinni. Ibn Jinni says the root of every word in Arabic. Is two letters and not three. And by changing that third letter. You get a change in the variation. You get, you get a variation in the meaning that's connected. So we say shakara. We take shin and ka, kaf. Right? Sheen and kaf. And just treat that. You get shakka. Shakaka. Shakka. Which is to doubt. Which is to doubt. Right? And, and revelation comes down to quell that doubt. To quell that doubt. Because we are in an illusion that we live self-sufficiently. And we doubt the munam. We doubt the benefactor. The one who is actually giving us of his blessing. We doubt that it actually comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the cure for doubt is shukr. The cure for shak is shukr. And if you switch it one more time, you get shakawa, which means to complain. To complain. To complain our states. To complain our wants. To complain our needs. That we never have enough. We don't have what we, what we, what we desire. 
And Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam once said, he said, whoever thinks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is miserly with his provision, is miserly with his blessing, let him beware. Because Allah just might give you everything you ever asked for out of his anger for you. Out of his anger with you, he might just give you everything you ever hoped for. Everything you ever desired or dreamt for. Out of his anger, he may give it to you. So this complaint, you know, we complain, oh Allah, I want, I want, I want. Never satisfied. One of them was complaining, one of the, uh, the, the Salaf was complaining to another righteous man. He's a righteous man, complaining to him of his poverty. And so this man said to him, what would you give for your eyes? A hundred thousand dirham? He said, easily I'd give that for my eyes. He said, what would you give for your hands? A hundred thousand dirham? He said, easily I'd give a hundred thousand dirham for each hand. He said, what would you give for your feet? A hundred thousand dirham? He said, for each foot I'd give easily more than a hundred thousand dirham. He said, what would you give for your tongue? And so on and so forth. He said, you are in possession of hundreds of thousands of dirham. And you still have the audacity to complain for your fear, for, for your lack of, of needs being fulfilled. For the lack of fulfillment of your needs, you're still complaining. And you are a walking treasure house of Allah's blessings. There are people in this community, Allah give them health, who just in, who, who just in no time, just in, in the recent past and in the very recent future, are not going to have the ability to speak. People in this community, they will not have the ability to speak with their tongues. We have, no, we have nothing to complain about. We have nothing to complain about whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fajr, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّيَ أَكْرَمُ Look at this human being, look at mankind. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huh? when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors him huh? and gives him. No, look at this human being. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries him, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ When his Lord tries him, when his Lord afflicts him, فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمُهُ By ennobling him and giving him of his generosity, فَيَقُولُ رَبِّيَ أَكْرَمًا And he says, my Lord has honored me, he has ennobled me. And it's a tribulation, it's an affliction, it's a trial and a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah calls it ibtila, a tribulation, when he gives to the human being. وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرْ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّيَ أَهَانَا And when he tries him and afflicts him and restricts or constricts his provision to him, he says, my Lord has abased me. My Lord has humiliated me. My Lord has disgraced me. Tying our happiness to what Allah gives or takes. And in the giving is a tribulation as, in, as is in the taking. In the generosity is a tribulation as in, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbika kareem. Oh mankind, what has deluded you from your most generous Lord? And they said, your generosity, dear Lord. It's your generosity, dear Lord, that, that deludes us from your generosity, from you. That deludes us from you. The reality of the situation is that anything that we are given and anything that is taken away from us is a tribulation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in essence, it is a blessing because Allah is intimately engaged and involved in our lives, in the giving and in the taking. And isn't that a great honor beyond belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually engage me as my Lord? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually engages me and he, doesn't, he just doesn't leave me to go. He actually engages me. By giving me. He engages me by taking from me. And all to bring out of me two qualities. Shukr or sabr. Shukr or sabr. There are two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are always on his servants. Two of Allah's attributes that never leave his servants. Either his bust or his qabr. 
his expansion or his constriction. He is either expanding our states and expanding our affairs and circumstances, or he is constricting our states and our affairs and our circumstances. And the expansion is in order to bring out of us shukr. And the constriction is in order to bring out of us what? Sabah. And Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah said that every bird has two wings, and the two wings of faith being that which will make the, the, the believer soar into the heavens. The two words, of, the two wings of faith are shukr and sabr. They're shukr and sabr. They're patience and they're gratitude. Gratitude and patience, respectively. Gratitude and patience. Ibn Ata'illah al-Sakandari says, Rubbama mana'aka fa'ataka. Rubbama ataka fa'mana'aka. He says that, Rubbama ataka fa'mana'aka. Rubbama mana'aka fa'ataka. He says that, how often does he give to you? How, I'm sorry, how often does he deprive you by giving you? And how often does he give to you by depriving you? How often does he deprive you by giving you? And how often does he give you by depriving you? He says, إِذَا فُتِحَ لَكَ or إِذَا فَتَحَ لَكَ بَابَ الْفَهْمِ فِي الْمَنْعَ that if the, the door of deprivation is open to you, if the door of understanding the deprivation is open to you, then that deprivation becomes the very essence of generosity. If you just understand it. If we're able to understand it. And that is a principle that is there in our deen, is taught to us by our Prophet ﷺ and by the sages, the great sages of this, of this deen. But it's also there, right there in the language itself. The language itself teaches us this message. For in the word ni'mah, in the word ni'mah, nun, ayn, meem, which is blessing, if you switch the letters you get meem, nun, ayn, manah. The word blessing itself, if you switch the letters, you get deprivation. For deprivation is a blessing. And you look at the word harman and rahman. For ha, ra, meem, which is to forbid something from coming to you. And harman is deprivation, literally deprivation. If you switch that, you get rahma, compassion. So out of his compassion, he deprives us. Out of his compassion, he deprives us. And out of his blessing, he prevents that blessing to come. For if it comes, who among us can say with confidence that we can actually give that blessing its due gratitude? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا that we have shown him the path. And he will either be shakir or kafur. He will be fa'il or fa'ul. Shakir is occasionally grateful. He's occasionally grateful. Shakir. But kafur, there's a difference between fa'il and fa'ul. Fa'il is occasional. Fa'ul, that's your state now. That's who you are. That's your, it's not just, no, it's not just a state that's temporary. That is who you are. That is your characteristic. Whereas shakir is your state. Shakir is a state. Kafur is a characteristic. Took me a long time to get there. <laughs> but we got there. Fa'il is your state. Fa'ul is your characteristic. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا استغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah wa alam and wa ala. Yesterday and this entire weekend, the 
nation is in a frenzy to celebrate the giving of thanks. And this tradition, this holiday, is exported throughout the world. You have Muslims in Muslim countries celebrating Thanksgiving along with us yesterday. And in essence, in spirit, commemorating a day in which we can all offer thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be lauded and praiseworthy. It is praiseworthy. However, there's some historical realities to this particular holiday that many of us neglect to mention or think about or do anything about much less. And that is, as the country is celebrating Thanksgiving, there is a segment of this country that has taken this day as a day of mourning. For it is a stark memory in their minds of a genocide of their entire peoples through killing, through pillaging, through disease, and through the usurpation of lands. The legacy of the First Nations of this country is no different from that of the Palestinians. And we have as our neighbors First Nations who are living on reservation camps all throughout this country and here in Northern California. And year in and year out, the entire country celebrates a day that they mourn. And it is such a mockery that we don't even think to extend any hand of brotherhood or fraternity to those nations and say that we belong to you and say that we love you, reach out to them and say that we understand you and that we mourn with you and that we seek your permission to even use these roads and highways for their permission has never been sought and to settle in these homes for their permission, permission has never been sought under which, under which are their burial grounds. And some of them even embrace this great faith of ours, and they sit among us today with no recognition for the pain in their hearts, for their ancestors who gave their lives in, in, in defending their way of life and their tradition and their language and their religion and their everything, their families. And every year we get stuck in this frenzy of turkeys and Black Friday. What deals are are online today. You know, how, how can I get, you know, I'm saving up my money for the, for the, for the, for the discount sale. For the past few months, I, I won't buy that VCR. Did I just say VCR? I just said VCR. <laughs> Black Friday, right? uh, where every single occasion has been twisted into some agenda that's going to make aggressors more and more wealthy at the expense of the working class. There are people in this country, American Indians, people of the First Nations, who are living under the poverty line in what, is, what exceeds more than 30%, in what exceeds 30%, in conditions that are absolutely and utterly abysmal three and four generations living in the same house because when one of them is out on their luck, they don't kick them out, but they absorb them into the, into the home. Where there is no plumbing, where there is no, uh, none of the amenities that we have, where utilities are not as consistent, especially because they can't pay all the bills. Where food is scarce, and many of them are suicidal. Many of them are in utter states of defeat and pain. And many of them are in need, financial need, brotherly need. They're in need of, of, of respect and dignity as human beings. And it is on their land. It is their land that we inhabit. And so wouldn't it be nice if Muslims 
if Muslims were to extend a, an embrace and extend an open hand to these people. For in the apathy of the entire world is the greatest opportunity for Muslims to show the love and the beauty and the light of Islam. As the entire world turns a blind eye, it is the great, that is the greatest opportunity for Muslims to square up and face them and say, will you embrace me as your brother? So wouldn't it be amazing if next Thanksgiving, 50 of us from this congregation were to go to a different, uh, to, to, an, uh, to, to an, uh, an American Indian reservation and sit at their feet and take from their tribal chiefs and say, teach us what we lack. Teach us what we need to know. Teach us the history of this land. For they have a narrative as well. They have a thing, to, thing or two to tell us about Columbus. They have a thing or two to tell us about Plymouth Rock. They have a thing or two to tell us about Thanksgiving and the Pilgrim. They have a thing, to tell us, a, a thing or two to tell us about the, Purit the Dutch, who, the, the Puritans, and what they did when they came in. They have a thing or two to tell us about the Taino. And instead of learning our history from the sixth grade lies my teacher told me to sit at their feet and to say, dear village elder, dear tri tribal chief, teach me what you know. In that is a gesture of brotherhood and fraternity that they are not used to. For the world turns a blind eye to them just like they turn a blind eye to the Palestinians. And it's the same exact story. Word for word. So on that, let us unite. And in that, let us celebrate. We'll have our feasts. We'll bring, be with our families. There's not, there's no, this is not a guilt trip khutbah. But the message is very clear. That we have to get to the essence of what is really being celebrated here. We have to really know exactly what's going on historically with this, with this and other holidays, and we have to reclaim it. Reclaim the true spirit of it, as the Prophet ﷺ did when he got to Medina, and he found the Jews fasting, and he said, why are you fasting? And they, they said, we're fasting because this was the day that Musa ﷺ took us from Egypt, and this is the day that commemorates our exodus. And he said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We are more entitled to Moses than you are. And so he, fa he added a day to the fast. He added, in other words, he improved it. He improved upon it. He beautified it. He adorned it. And he owned it. So Thanksgiving, are you, are you ready to own it? But to own the essence of it? And to own, to own up to the history of it? And to actually pay homage to the people who suffered in this, in, 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 in this country? Defending themselves? For in that is the secret of brotherhood that could be the door to their salvation and our redemption. قولوا قبل هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار وجعلنا من المحسنين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم لا تحرمنا معية رسولك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في السكنات وفي الحركات وفي الأقوال وفي الأفعال وفي الأحوال أبد الآبدين يا أرحم الراحمين واجمعنا به عند الحوض وبعض الحوض يا رب العالمين وارزقنا جواره في جنات النعيم اللهم آمين آمين واجعلنا من عبيدك الشاكرين الصابرين الشاكرين الصابرين الشاكرين الصابرين الذين كمل إيمانهم في هذه الدنيا يا أرحم الراحمين بفضلك ومنتك يا كريم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما